What's up, guys? Rick Gaiman here with the fifth annual Optimal March Madness bracket where we use math, logic, reason, game theory, and zero basketball knowledge to make the best possible lineup that we can. This year is a little bit different. Some of the tools that we've used in the past uh, no longer exist. That's okay. I've got solutions there. So I've got new tools to show you, and I have a contest for all of us to get into as well, which I think will be fun. We can use some math for and all that fun stuff. Um, if you're coming back from a previous year, welcome back. Thank you. Good to have you. Appreciate the support. If you are new here, what took you so long? Uh, what we're going to do here is me, the guy who covers golf for a living and golf data, who knows nothing about basketball, is going to put a bunch of numbers into a spreadsheet and try to pump out the best possible bracket that we can make. It's been pretty successful over the last couple of years. Uh, 2019, we were in the 98th percentile. 2021 was 94th percentile. 2022, 99th percentile and 81 percentile in 2023 last year. So we had Houston last year. They did not win the championship. It was still a bracket that was better than 81% of all other brackets that were made. This concept is very simple. The ability to put this concept into practice is a little bit different. So let me start to uh, lay this out for you. The March Madness tournament is the only event in which you get odds, the ability to create outcomes, and also know what people are going to do prior to you having to make your own decisions. Okay. That's where the game theory comes into play. A lot more on that in just a second. I will reiterate, I know nothing about college basketball, literally nothing here. Here is, you know, last year's bracket. Um, as I kind of show through, like, I don't, I don't care about 12s over a five. I don't care about this star player getting hurt. I don't care about a team that got a bad draw or like, it's just, it's all, it's all already baked in. We are going to try to find leverage spots throughout this bracket. Last year, despite it being our worst performance and still beating 81% of other brackets, last year's bracket opened up and laid down for us. And we did not get the run out that we needed. You know, for Purdue to get knocked out in the opening round, that's amazing for us, right? For, for Kansas to go down to Arkansas early, amazing for us. You know, we had Creighton going deep into this thing and they, they went deep enough. They just didn't go, they didn't beat San Diego state. Um, you know, this is this bracket laid wide open for it. We thrive in chaos. Okay. That is our situation. We thrive in chaos. If you look back at last year, um, you know, for, for winning the championship, for getting the best possible leverage, we had Houston, number one, Texas Creighton and Connecticut were all inside the top four. We opted for Houston, didn't roll our way, but there's plenty Plenty of other opportunities. Okay, this year. So what we would normally do is we would normally take basically two data points. We would take 538's uh, projections to win, for every team to win each round. And we would use ESPN's uh, who picked who or who picked whom information to show what the public was doing. Guess what? Neither of those exist anymore, right? 538 sports, that that doesn't exist anymore. ESPN does not appear to be showing the who the who picked whom. And the idea behind this is, is very, very simple. There are going to be teams that are picked way more frequently to win than the probability that they actually win. We are going to find the opposite of that. Teams that are more likely to win than to than they are being picked to win, we are going to call that leverage. We are going to put a couple calculations in a spreadsheet, and we are going to go nuts. Um, this strategy is best used in large pools. Okay, you're talking about um, you know a million people, a thousand people, whatever that is. I'm going to take basically every edge that I can of 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 leverage. If you're in a smaller pool. You don't necessarily need to take on as much risk. We can talk more about that in a little bit. So where are we going to fill the gaps for this year? Um, I have opted to go with Pool Genius. Pool Genius is a product from, from Team Rankings. Uh, team Rankings is 
a, a, a great company that, that I have a relationship with for golf. So pool genius does, I mean, they do this all year round, right? They do college basketball all year round. Um, I know that there are already hundreds of hours into the analysis of this and have been, you know, making adjustments for injuries and all that fun stuff. And what I also know is that they get their public pick information directly from ESPN, directly from Yahoo, directly from these big sites. They have relationships with all of them. And so even though ESPN is not showing the who picked who data, they're sending it to Pool Genius. So we we have it, okay? So I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with their picks or with their odds and all that stuff. One, because I don't know anything myself, but two, like I said, um, you know, I, I flew to Denver and, and met with these guys, um, in the golf off season because we worked, I consulted on one of their golf tools. So I know their process. I know how well they go into this stuff. I, I like these guys a lot. So this is the first time that I've really gotten into their March madness stuff, but it has everything that we need. There's a lot more that we don't need. You know, there are, you can put in your bracket information. You can put in how many people, like it'll pump out all that stuff for you. You can check out the data grid. You can make all the adjustments that you want. They did give me a discount to share with you guys. So the link is in the description. You can get up to 55% off for March Madness stuff, for golf stuff, for for everything. Um, Okay. Oh, the other thing is everything you need is in the description. You, You don't have to like ask where anything's at, everything you need, links to old brackets, links to tools, links to contests, everything's in the description. So what I did is I took all this beautiful data, I did a little bit of formatting, and I came up with this year's spreadsheet. So if you've never seen this before, it might be a lot, uh, but I'll walk you through it. This is every team on the left-hand side, what region they are in, the odds that they are going to make it to each round or make it through each round, the public pick percentage, which we're getting from Pool Genius again. Then we are putting a leverage number on that. And then I'm adjusting the leverage so that it's a little bit easier to understand and doesn't penalize. Um, If you just do raw leverage, there's issues with teams that are super popular or super likely to win and all that stuff. So uh, I adjust it to do uh, like an adjusted leverage number. I call it leverage plus, And that is basically what we go with. This again is in the description. I will not give you access to share this or edit this. What you can do is if you go down to the t- tab here on 2024 and right click and click copy to, you can add this to your own Google drive and you can do anything you want with it. I'm not going to give out access to it. So now we have our data here. Now we have a blank bracket that looks like this. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. And we've got to figure out a way to fill this out, knowing nothing about any of these teams. So I'm looking at this data for the first time with you right now. And I like to do a couple of things. I like to start with um, who's going to win the whole thing. There is an exponentially, there's an exponential amount of points for picking the winner correct. You are not dead in any bracket contest until your winner has been knocked out. Because the, I mean, those first round games are worth like nothing. Okay. As long as your champ is alive, you are alive. I like to start with the winner. I like to look at the final four. I like to then go back to round one and get some of the better leverage plays there. Um, But right now off the top of my head, there's two questions. Who are we picking to win and how far do we have Connecticut going? Because when I sort this by odds to win, UConn is seemingly the heavy favorite. They are going to win March Madness 22% of the time. Guess what? That means they are going to lose and not win 78% of the time. I'll say it again. This hasn't this exact statement hasn't burned me yet, but it will burn me at some point. If you pick Connecticut to win March Madness in a large pool, you're probably doing it wrong. Okay? Because they are being selected by 30% of the public. So they're going to win 22% of the time. They're being selected 30% of the time. That is negative leverage. It is very difficult for us in a large pool to pick UConn. 
The next best option would be, or the next highest odds would be Purdue. Purdue is being selected at exactly the same rate of their odds, 10.2%. So there is no leverage. That is fair. If you want to go with Purdue, have at it. Okay. Houston is next. Odds to win 10%, public percentage 12%, a little bit of negative leverage, probably cannot go there. The next two options might be my two favorite options. Arizona is going to win this 7.7% of the time. They're being selected at half that rate, 4.5%, or Auburn at 5.7% to win and being selected at 2.3%. So we're getting a lot of leverage out of Arizona, Auburn, Tennessee, Iowa State, Marquette. All of those teams have between a 4 and 7% chance to win March Madness. It's not a lot, but uh, it's not. I mean, this is actually more teams. So last year, I was just going back to last year. Last year, there were only three teams, four teams with more than 5% chance to, to win, six teams with more than 4% chance to win. This year, there are um, eight teams with more than a 4% chance to win. So pretty interesting, a little bit more wide open. That's probably good for us. So right now I look at Arizona and I say, okay, uh, good odds to win, good leverage. And then I also see something very fishy here. Houston's, or excuse me, Arizona's in the West as the two seed. North Carolina's in the West as the one seed. And North Carolina, I don't, I'm assuming there's an injury. I'm assuming maybe they did not play well in their conference tournament or at the end of the year, are only at 2.8% odds to win March Madness. And I double checked this. I went and looked at like sports books. Arizona has shorter odds or equal odds of winning March Madness than North Carolina does, which is very interesting to me. I don't know what happened there, but I this also makes the case for Arizona having a pretty clean path or at least a number one seed that might not be as strong. This would be crappy if we liked Arizona with leverage, but they were in the same region as Connecticut. That would stink, uh, but they are not. The other problem with Auburn, even though I like their leverage number, is they are in UConn's region. Now, as I'm starting to formulate this in my brain, I don't know what the bracket looks like. I'm hoping UConn and, Houston, uh, and Arizona are on opposite sides of the bracket because I want if, if we do end up going with Arizona, I want, to, um, I want them to run into UConn as late as possible. Let's see. Uh, okay, so here's North Carolina in the West. So here's Arizona. No. So UConn and Arizona would meet in the final four. Not ideal, but not the end of the world. If we just sort winners by leverage plus, Arizona's our best option. Auburn's our best option. I wouldn't even mind Tennessee. This is actually pretty tough. Both Tennessee and Arizona. Is Tennessee in an opposite uh, Midwest. They okay. So Tennessee would meet UConn only in the championship game. Interesting. So I think I've got it narrowed down to those two to win. And also we're gonna Marquette is. I think we're gonna end up having to get Marquette on a run here. Um, but we'll we'll start with our winner. Arizona and Tennessee. I'm gonna go with Arizona. Better uh, better odds to win. More leverage. And there's something weird going on with North Carolina, which is their number one seed. So with that, our 2024 champion of March Madness is going to be Arizona. And now we just have to figure out who they're going to play, how, how those teams are going to get there, and what happens next. Just clicking through Pool Genius, and they've got you know the same, the same survival grid. I do wonder what's up with North Carolina, right? They are significantly down to win it all, to make the finals. I don't know, something, maybe they have an injury or something. Okay, um, so so it, question number one is answered. How, how who's going to win our champion? Who's going to win? Now our next question is how far does UConn go? The good news is looking at this, as long as you don't have UConn winning it all, you can probably bounce them anywhere. You know, it it does not, uh, there are some years where, I think there, like in Zaga maybe a year, last year or somebody else, where there are obvious places to bounce teams where it's like everyone has them going to 
the final four or everyone has them winning it all and you can bounce them the round before that and you can get a lot of leverage or something like that. That's not really the case with, with UConn this year. Uh, they are a negative leverage team to make the Sweet 16 and on. Now, they are a a third of the time they're going to make the championship game and about half the time they're going to make it to the final four, which again means two thirds of the time they're not going to make the championship and over half the time they're not going to make the final four. But just for our sanity, I think the, the logical place to run UConn out is against Arizona right? That would give us the, that would send them to the final four, which is a fairly, you know, likely compared to other teams outcome. And then it would also, uh, give us a significant leverage game in that final four. If it ends up being Arizona versus UConn one where we could, I'm just a massive leverage game. And if UConn gets bounced before that, it doesn't matter. The other thing is, you know, people are like, Oh no, you had UConn going to the final four and they lost in the first round, dude. That's good news. As long as you don't have them winning at all, right? If 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 UConn lost in the first round, I don't care. I would be thrilled because that means they're definitely not going to win. 30% of people are definitely not going to get the full champion points. Like even if you have a team, as long as you're kind of against, you know, making a stand on a team against them, if they lose earlier than you want them, that's okay. That is okay. All right. So what do we have? Um, We've done the West and we've done the East. So we need the South and the Midwest. So let's do this by by region here. So let's start with the South. Where's Marquette? Okay, Marquette is popping up like crazy. Again, I don't know what's going on here, but their odds to win the whole thing are 4%. Pretty huge. That's a ton of leverage. We can't have them winning the whole thing. Can we have them making the championship game? We could. Their leverage there is about 22% of adjusted leverage. Them making the final four. Oh, this is really interesting. This, this South region is going to be a lot of fun. So, you know, we've got to bounce. We've got to bounce Houston at some point. I don't think we can have Houston making the final four. There is just, there is just two many people picking that versus the odds that that is actually going to happen. We probably can't get them to the final four. Marquette though has better odds than Duke to get to the final four, but a little bit worse leverage. They have a better leverage to make the championship game. That would kind of be sick, right? So if you took Marquette to the championship, and could you you could even run them into I mean that's kind of a good path too. You run them into Duke in the what is that the Elite Eight. Marquette gets to the Final Four. Those are two very high leverage teams for us, and it would basically take Houston winning one, two games. Okay, that's fine. So they'd get bounced in what? The Sweet 16. So them to not make it to the Elite Eight is going to happen. It's going to happen over half the time, 55% of the time. So I might like that a lot. The question is, do they go to the actual championship game? Because we've got to consider the Midwest still here. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. So Tennessee, everyone has Tennessee making the Final Four and not going any farther, right? So it's negative leverage to make the final four, a ton of leverage to get into the championship game and a ton of leverage to win the championship. Purdue's got slightly better odds for this to happen, but they're being picked too much. So now we kind of have to compare. So we can get, we can get Tennessee into the final four. Three two seeds and a one seed. Again, I don't really care about that. Um, Now, is it better for Marquette or Tennessee to get to to make the championship? The answer is Marquette. Um, They're both good. 
I wouldn't, I would not, I would not be upset with you if you had any combination of Marquette, Duke, Tennessee, Gonzaga, Creighton getting out of, getting out of those two regions. I would not, I would not beat you up for that. But I think we're going to bend the knee to the data here and say, because we're getting an extra round of leverage on Marquette to make the final four in which we don't have on Tennessee. And then because we have more leverage on them to make the championship game, we are going to do it. We're going to, we're going to send Marquette to the, to the national title game. Okay. They are going to lose to Arizona. So now it is UConn, Arizona, Marquette, Tennessee in our championship or in our final four. The total, the total score. I have no idea how fast, what's the pace of college basketball games these days? Uh, what if it's, 65, 65 is 130. Let's call it 138. I, I have no idea if that's remotely close. Okay. So now we've got to fill in the rest of this. Let's look at our one seat. So, so what you should probably end up doing here is unless there is a really compelling case otherwise, you should probably just have the no, those number one seeds running into your your big leverage spots. And if they lose before that, fine. If they win and beat your big leverage spots, like it, it was going to stink for you anyway. There's not a lot of leverage in bouncing Purdue early or earlier than we need to bounce them. So we will just take them to the Sweet 16 against Tennessee. North Carolina, though, I bet you they're... North Carolina is such a weird situation. What is their deal? Here they are. Oh my gosh. I mean, how early can we get them out of here? I mean, look at this. The odds to make the Sweet 16 in the West. North Carolina, the number one seed. The number four seed, Alabama, and the number three seed, Baylor, are within 6% of one another. All between 46 and 52%. Coin flips for them to get to the Sweet 16 while Arizona is going to get there 70% of the time. So what we could conceivably do... Because Baylor, I guess, could be a problem for us. Uh, but Baylor is going to run into Arizona in the Sweet 16. So that would be fine. Okay, so that's fine. We, we can have them getting to the Sweet 16. That's fine. So what we then need to do is watch this. Because Alabama, look at the switch. Negative leverage to make the Sweet 16 and then a ton of leverage from there on out. And we want an opportunity to kind of get rid of North Carolina early in this thing. We'll take North Carolina to the Sweet 16. Alabama gets to the Elite Eight with... Um, is that the Elite Eight? Yeah. One, uh, two, four, six. Oh, that's the Sweet 16. God, I'm so... This is... I, I've i said this last year. I hate the way this bracket looks on the computer. This doesn't make any sense. Why would you have... They have round of 64, round of 32, Sweet 16. They don't have something for Elite Eight. And then... Uh, just, uh, anyway, sorry. Um, so we have Alabama getting to the sweet 16 We have Alabama getting to the elite eight, losing to Arizona. Okay. That's, that's what we want. That's, that's good. We have North Carolina. Okay. So we're almost done with the West with the important stuff. Let's go to the Midwest. So we've got to get somebody else to meet up with Tennessee and somebody else to meet up with Purdue. Wow. Look at this. There is only one team with more than 45% to make the Sweet 16 and a ton of positive leverage, and it's Gonzaga. Aren't they usually a very public team? People are down on them this year. So the Zags, how far could we take the Zags here? To beat McNeese, to probably beat Kansas, to get to Purdue, then Purdue would beat them. Which is sad. I would I would probably like... Um, I mean, you could you could take you could take Gonzaga to the Elite Eight. That's a tough spot. I would not I would not beat you up for either one of these. Gonzaga is a huge amount of leverage, but they are less than half as likely to get there as Purdue. Purdue's fifty three percent to make the Elite Eight. Gonzaga, while a ton of leverage, is only twenty percent. If you wanted to take that spot fine. I'll stick with Purdue here. Though I would really love to get Gonzaga there. 
I mean, let's do it, right? We've got, we've got, we've got that team losing in the next round anyway, right? So this is actually tough. I don't know what to do. Um, we've got that team losing in the next round anyway. So it's really just one game here, but it's a huge leverage game. Let's take the leverage. I said I would take the leverage. I said I would make this for a lot of big pools. If you want to, if you want to adjust this for your own pools, which is kind of one of the big things that, um, that pool genius does. So what you do is you go and you put in your bracket details, right? So you say how many people are in it. Hey, there's only a hundred people in it, or there's a thousand people. There's 10 payouts. Here are the payouts, you know, like whatever you put all that, you put all that stuff in here and then it tells you, It'll make brackets for you. Does it include the play-in games? Uh, is it standard scoring? Do you get bonus points for picking upsets? Where is this set up? Let's say it's set up on ESPN, right? And then, so it's not ready yet, but I think, yeah, Monday evening. So I'm recording this before it's ready, but it comes out and it gives you options. It says, hey, here's your optimal bracket. Then it'll say, if you don't like that, or if you're playing multiple brackets, here are a couple other options. There's... It that that's the best part about the the um the golf one and done tool that we do is that it's completely custom to you. It's completely personalized. If you don't want to take on that risk or you don't need to take on that risk, it won't it won't force you to. But for purposes of this, for for fun, for trying to get a 99th percentile bracket, we'll we'll take the extra leverage. And if we're gonna do that, if we're gonna take the Zags, let's take Oregon, right? To make the Sweet 16 as well, the other high leverage team with over a 20% chance to get there. You could take one of these, you could take both of these, you could take neither of these. Again, kind of up to you or, you know, use the Pool Genius tool to get it custom to your situation, but I'm I'm going for it, okay? So we've got that Sweet 16 done. We need to get, oh, we have nothing. We have nothing in the East. Let's go to the East here. Okay, so to make, we need to, we need to figure out who is going to play UConn in the Sweet 16 and who is going to get to the Elite Eight. So Elite Eight odds are UConn, duh, Iowa State, Illinois, Auburn. Iowa State, Illinois, Auburn. Okay, so from down here, from the bottom. Okay, so that makes sense. So they would not have to play UConn until, uh, until that Elite Eight. So Iowa State or Illinois, because Auburn would run into them. Okay, so that's pretty easy then, I think. Hold on, let's see this real quick. We just run Auburn. Yeah. So the best team to get to the Sweet 16 from the other side of that bracket, the best odds to get there with a tiny bit of positive leverage is Auburn. So that's kind of a no-brainer. Auburn runs into UConn, they get bounced. Problem solved. So now who do we get? Who do we take? Iowa State or Illinois to make it to the Elite Eight? Uh, Iowa State has better odds. Illinois is slightly better leverage, though it's not good leverage. And if we're going to go that far, should we just go and get BYU? Is BYU down here? They are. Everybody's bouncing BYU in that second game. So that would be where they run into Illinois. Um, Everybody's bouncing them there. And then they have Illinois going one more round. So they have, they have Illinois going here and losing to Iowa State. How do I clear that out? Oh, God. I shouldn't have done. Oh, now I'm going to be so confused. Hold on. I can't clear it. I just got to like what override it with some other team. Okay. Um, okay. So this is a very high leverage spot, this game right here. BYU versus Illinois. Illinois get Illinois gets there 54 percent of the time BYU gets there 36 percent of the time but it is just a drastic drop off in public pick percentage let's do it we'll we'll, we'll we'll stack up all the all of them we can so we're gonna what does that make sense though because then in the elite eight does Iowa State have a better leverage number um no they don't. Illinois has a better leverage number to get to the Elite Eight. See, the problem here is we've kind of boxed ourselves into a situation where if we go with BYU, we should take them to here. We should take them to run into UConn in the Elite Eight. 
this is this feels like Creighton from last year, doesn't it? Where it's like this team is, you know, this one team is going to decide a lot. All right, let's do it. You know, whatever. Um, they are not that far behind Auburn to get to the Elite Eight, which means they're not that far behind Illinois to get to the Elite Eight. 11% and a ton of leverage. We're going to do it, kids. Take us Iowa State, BYU, BYU wins, BYU gets to the Elite Eight. Don't think I love it, but that's okay. Um, now we got to get whoever goes to the South for Marquette and eventually loses to Marquette. It looks like the answer is probably Texas Tech. They are uh, they have the best odds to get there with a positive leverage of teams that we haven't already ruled out. So Duke Duke is Duke is moving on. Um, Kentucky would have to beat or uh, Texas Tech would have to beat Kentucky, which they are. You know, listen, it's to get there. It's a thirteen percent um, odds difference, but it's a. 35% public perception difference. We already have talked, we already talked about Marquette. We already talked about Houston. So we've got to go Texas Tech here, Texas Tech to beat what will be Kentucky and then lose to Marquette. So our so we are set on sweet 16s and elite 8s, which is nice. So now we just have to go back and basically do these first round matchups. So these are these are the fun ones too, right? So there are a lot of spots where uh, you can get a little bit of leverage here. So let's do the East. Okay, so those East first round games. Uh, and we'll do just, we'll just do odds. Okay, so we need FAU and Northwestern. That's this game right here. So it is a coin flip. Okay, so this is a great example. And it's, it's maybe it's a lot easier to wrap, wrap people's heads around when it's just one game. Northwestern is a tiny favorite to win, 52%. But they are being uh, selected at forty six percent, small bit of leverage, very small. But like if I if we flipped coins, if you and I flipped coins, and every time you got it correct, I gave you two dollars, and every time I got it correct, you gave me a dollar fifty. You would want to play until time stops. So we're gonna take this, right? So we are gonna take Northwestern. That's an easy one. San Diego State and UAB are here. San Diego State is a somewhat heavy favorite, seventy-four percent to win. Um, they're being selected a little bit more than that, but not to me. This is not enough. You know, if you want to take UAB, it is technically positive leverage, but for San Diego State to win this seventy-five percent of the time, and we have them losing, like we don't need a Cinderella here. We don't. We don't need anybody to be a hero. Drake and Washington State are here. Um, Drake is, or excuse me, Washington state is the favorite and being selected slightly below 50%. So we are going Washington state. That was pretty easy. So our East is complete West Mississippi state and Michigan state. Uh, very, very close, very close. They're being select. I mean, Mississippi state is going to win 40% of the time and being selected right at that. Michigan State, again, same thing, being selected right at that. So I'm just going to take the favorite, the team that's going to win 60% of the time. That's that's a that's a very fair one. No, there's not there's not going to be a ton of blood there. Um, Saint, because everybody has them losing to North Carolina next anyway, which if you wanted to bounce North Carolina there, have at it. St. Mary's and Grand Canyon. Um. Again, very close to what their actual their public pick percentage is very close to what their odds are. So then we are going to take the team that wins 72% of the time. Again, we don't need that St. Mary's. We don't need a we don't need heroes here. Clemson, we've already we've already asked for our heroes. Clemson and New Mexico. Um, this is New Mexico is the favorite and being uh picked less than 50%. So we are going with New Mexico over Clemson. Then we need Dayton and Nevada. Dayton, Nevada. Same thing, or actually not same thing. Uh, Dayton's about 57% to win, but only being selected 52% of the time. So we are going to take Dayton. Bang, bang, bang. We are going to go to the Midwest now. We need Utah State and TCU, which are here. Uh, TCU's a bigger favorite than they are being selected, 65% to 58%. So that's positive leverage for the favorite. We are taking TCU. Kansas and Samford. 
Samford, and Kansas. Um, Kansas is negative leverage. They're being overselected, but it's 75% to win. And I don't think we have them going far. We don't. We have them losing the next round. They are the team. Creighton, our friends at Creighton and Akron. Um, wow, still pretty little respect for Creighton too. They're being selected to win 93% of the time, but they're going to win 89% of the time. So we are going to roll Creighton out here. If I can find the right tab to put them in, this one. And then we need Texas versus whatever that play-in winner is. UVA, jeez. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, that the play-in winner, it's hard because we don't even know who it is. They technically have a ton of leverage in this matchup and they will win. Should we do that? Do we just bounce Texas? I mean, they're going to win that game 40% of the time. And it doesn't matter who it is. It's just whoever wins the first game you get. So they're going to win the game against Texas 40% of the time. They're being selected 18%. Let's take it. Okay. Where are my missing picks? Oh, uh, South. We don't need heroes, but we'll take them if we can find them. We need Nebraska and Texas A&M. Very, very close. This is a... Uh, Nebraska's got a hair of leverage here. They are winning it more frequently than they're being selected. Both are very, very close to coin flips. Let's take Nebraska. And then Wisconsin versus James Madison. This one's pretty tight as well. Although they're both being selected at their expected win rate so in that case we'll just take the favorite wisconsin and then last pick i believe florida versus that other play-in winner which is wow again wow so this is the, the the 10 seed so bsu who the hell is that boise state or colorado is the favorite to get is to beat florida and they're being sele selected well that's a huge leverage spot that is a huge leverage spot in the first round so we'll take that. There you go. Brackets complete. But wait, there's more. Hold on. There's still plenty more. But just to recap, Arizona beats Marquette in the championship. Marquette in Tennessee, UConn in Arizona in the final four. Um, I will submit this. I will pr you know, print it out. I'll put the link in the description. You can check it out. There is plenty of different ways you can go with this. Um, again, this is for my situation. If you want to customize this to your situation and see all the other picks, Pool Genius gave me the subscription for you guys or the discount for you guys up to 55%. Link is in the description. Check it out. Go sign up. I love the, I love what we've done with our golf tools. Um, so far, so good on the March Madness tools. The other thing is golf one and done is getting very popular. And from what I understand, March Madness Survivor is getting very popular. This is a sick concept. You pick one team each day. If they win, you move on. This is so sick. So what I did is I added another line to the spreadsheet here. Because what you want for this concept, if you're playing in a survivor, is you want a team who is likely to win now, who has no future value, right? Holding on to them is not worth anything. You're not going to play... Arizona in round one because you you they have a ton of future value. So I added a new line here. This gets me all amped up. What you're looking for is a team that has a big odd, uh, big odds to win in round one, but then they are way less likely to win in round two, right? So getting rid of that future value. I believe the top teams for this are probably um, San Diego State, North Carolina, and Baylor. To pick out of the gate. I don't know if they all play on day one though. You'll have to check that out yourself. But San Diego State is 74% to win their first game. But then 25% to advance another stage. Because they are going to run into Auburn. Right? North Carolina. I might take North Carolina. North Carolina 97% to win in round one. A coin flip to get past and into round two. That's wild. That's wild. And then Baylor, same thing. Because Baylor runs into somebody. Oh, they run into win this game. Oh, it could be Clemson or it could be this very high leverage New Mexico team. And then they run into Arizona or whoever. They don't have a ton of value after the first round or two. So I think this is a phenomenal concept. 
you can use math to figure that out as well. So Splash, which is where we host Splash Sports, which is where we host the golf one and done in our weekly golf contest. They have these survivor pools. So we've got one for the Rick Run Good community, which is pretty cool. So one, first of all, it's 30 bucks. You can enter 30 times if you want. Uh, it's winner take all. So you can win up to 30 grand. This is all legal, regulated, 40 states or 41 states plus DC. You pick one team each day and keep going as long as you're alive. The other thing we did is this though. So if you enter this, whether you do well or not, you get a free entry into our PGA, our weekly PGA contest for next week, the week after the first week of March Madness, okay? So you get a free entry into that, and then that free roll has a bunch of Rick Run Good subscriptions, yearlies, uh, monthlies, and weeklies, depending on your finish. There's Splash Cash, there's Splash Swag, so it's a free roll. So if you enter the, the Survivor Contest, you're automatically in the free roll as well which is pretty cool. I thought that was nice of them to do. So link for this is in the description. Um, again, it's 30 bucks. You can enter, I think up to 30 times or something like that. And winner take all or that splits amongst ties. Um, I think that's it. You guys really appreciate the support. Another year in the books, fingers crossed for Arizona. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Share it around. If you can, you know, like subscribe, all that fun stuff goes a long way for me. Thanks guys. Good luck.